Hey there, avid listeners. Thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop. Hope you're having a wonderful day. All right, so today we're going to be talking about We Are the Ashes, We Are the Fire by Joy McCullough. This is a young adult uh, contemporary novel that is written in both prose and verse. And it was really interesting to see it. The story um, follows M. She's the girl she wants. She's struggling with the guilt and desire for revenge after her sister um, her sister's rapist escapes with no prison time. You know, it's a very strong opening because you have the sisters going to court and in our society, and we do get to see we see it a lot in the news, um, they get no, no prison time. You know, it's kind of just a slap in the face to the victim who went through all the pain of reliving the events of their rape to try to get this person um, punished for it. And, you know, it's still happening that they get no prison time. So that's basically what happens in the beginning of the story. And that's not a spoiler. Um, The author does inform you of that in the... Um, synopsis of the book but it is a story of rape for many of you Um, that there's the trigger warning it is a story of rape it is a story of surviving rape was M personally raped no but her sister was and she's such an advocate of feminist rights and equality that she feels guilty because she pushed her sister to pursue this case. She convinced her sister, you know, don't take the plea deal. We can get him. And, you know, the jury came back with a unanimous and guilty verdict. And then you have the judge. Judge, old white man, who's like, let's not see this young boy's future ruin for one mistake. It's not a mistake. Um, When you rape someone, that's not a mistake. I have to say that. It's it's just not a mistake. That's, that's a conscious decision to overpower someone for your own needs and desires. Not even needs, like for your own desires and wants. And that is what happens right at the beginning of the story. And, you know, after the verdict, she says, and once again, not a spoiler, this is um, reference on the synopsis of the book. She says she wants a fucking sword. So, of course, that gets so much media attention. A girl saying she wants a sword after um, a rape trial. Yeah. Um... But, you know, I think it says a lot about the storytelling. It says a lot about the um, way society really just treats victims of rape. And, you know, it's shameful. I think we can all agree it's it's very shameful. Um... People, rapists, deserve punishment. You know, they really do. Um, And it says something that even in the prison, if you are a rapist or... And this is just um, a study that I read 10 years ago, so maybe it's outdated. But 10 years ago, (coughs) pardon me, there was a study. You know, even criminals think that rapists and pedophiles are the worst. They're the ones that are beaten and raped in prison, in case you're wondering. So it says something when even criminals think those criminals are like the lowest of the low, because they are. Um, and, <coughs> pardon me, I'm still getting over my cold. I think it's just... <sighs> 
it is empowering um, to read this novel. Let me say that. It has a lot of triggers. If if you are a victim, um, if you are a survivor, I recommend this book just because of how empowering it is. It may, unfortunately, you know, trigger lots of pain, but the way the story it develops <clears throat> is just it's so intriguing because M, you know, she's she's reeling, you know, she's on the newspaper and she was writing stories about victims, keeping it anonymous, of course, to tell their stories during this whole trial. And then she did her own op ed that she, she wasn't supposed to do about her own sister and published it. You know, I, I will say this. I do like Emma as a character, but I do feel as though she didn't think things through after the trial. Um, I understand she's angry, but she wasn't the victim. You know, she wasn't the one who had to continue to relive her pain. She was definitely sympathetic to her sister, very empathetic to her sister, but she has no idea what her sister is really going through. And that's the part that kind of bothered me of her. She's trying to do the right thing here and there. She's trying to, you know, tell a story and bring awareness, but I think she's forgetting that she's opening a lot of these wounds. And Slowly but surely, she does realize that. She does come to realize, yeah, you know, I've definitely opened um, a lot of wounds here. <coughs> oh, pardon me. I'm so sorry. Especially when her sister, her sister pulls away from her. You know, they don't become, they aren't as close as they used to be. So really the the story is about M, but it's also about this um legendary creature. I've kind of done some research on this char on this character. There's not really a lot um out there about this legendary figure. But she's a woman. She um it, she was a woman in um, France, uh, Margaret de Bressou, 15th century French nobleman. There we go. Sorry, I just have to go through my notes real quickly. Um, and she was a legendary figure. Uh, there's really no evidence of if she existed or not, but the fact that there is a legend of a woman knight avenging um, rape victims does say something because the legend is pretty old. The legend does go back centuries. Um, so I think that that's inter interesting. Was it really this person who probably who existed? Probably not. But clearly there was a woman who <coughs> who took revenge. Um, she became a knight. She went from a noblewoman to a knight, as the legend goes, and she basically hunted down her rapist and her maid's rapist and killed them. And I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> I think that's brilliant. Because they were also an invading force. Um, and that happened a lot, you know. Actually, that still happens. Invading forces do tend to take advantage of women um, whenever they invade. And it's very sad. It's very unfortunate. Um, so what M decides to do is she finds comfort in this legendary figure. And this is where the prose comes in. She is a poet at heart. And she decides to write Margaret's story. And... <laughs> 
bring it to life, to give it life. And I w- it was so wonderful to read. Um, those are probably some of my favorite parts. And there's also a lot of intricate artwork in the story as well. Honestly, I loved it. Um, I really did love it. I, I have to say, this is a very empowering story. It moves at a great pace. It's dealing with really tough issues. But it's dealing with the tough issues of someone who's close to a victim. You know, not the victim themselves. So, I thought that was really well done. Um, because it's not the... You get to see the ramifications of M's actions. You get to see how, as much as she wants to help, she's hurting her sister instead. As much as she wants to help, she's just not <clears throat> not thinking things through. She keeps acting like... I think she's forgetting who the real victim of everything is. And it's her sister, but she's so caught up in her own anger that her sister's rapist got got off that she's letting that overwhelm all sense but she learns and I do like the development of the story I do love the pacing I do love the character growth and I love seeing how this situation has affected M as a person you know honestly it was so beautifully written it was wonderfully written it's a definitely a tough subject to read about, but I wholly recommend it. You know, I have to go ahead and give this book um, four and a half, five stars. I haven't quite decided yet. I really want to give it five stars, but there's just, I don't know what is keeping me from giving it those five stars. But I really do want to give it five stars because it is such an amazing and wonderful story. You know, it definitely deserves to be read. It, des- it deserves to be you know, discussed in a book club. It deserves to be discussed, period. And, you know, it was just honestly quite wonderful. I have to say, it was quite wonderful. So, once again, this is We Are the Fire. No, We Are the Ashes, We Are the Fire, sorry, by Joy McCullough. I'm going to go ahead and give it five stars. Uh, I do recommend purchasing the book. Please support your local bookseller and purchase from a bookstore or online book retailer. Please try to stay away from Amazon. I think it's safe to say they get enough of our business with everything else. Um, If you're on the fence, if you're just like, I don't know if I can buy this book, check it out from your local library. Libraries are a great resource for the community and they definitely deserve all the support that we can give them. And you know what? If you end up loving the book, please support the author by writing reviews, spreading the word, and purchasing it if you're able to. On that note, I hope you all will continue to support me by liking Sin's Workshop, following my podcast, and sharing it with all your book-loving friends. Hope you all have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading.